What if extraterrestrial life is found on Mars? NASA has predicted that extraterrestrial life in its microbial form will be discovered on Mars in 2021. What if this proves to be the case? On the 18th of February, 2021, NASA landed its Perseverance rover on Mars to find signs of ancient extraterrestrial life on the Red Planet. Mars may have been once home to a healthy water system on its surface, which means life could have easily survived and evolved. So, what if NASA finds living aliens on Mars? This video unveils the mystery behind NASA's current mission to Mars. I'm Michael Taylor and this is my YouTube channel The Investigative Intelligence Report. Please subscribe to it and don't forget to like, comment, and share my videos. Before we begin, have a look at my affiliate products catalog. To buy my products, simply click on the links in the description below. Traces of unusual methane emissions on the Martian atmosphere have raised hopes of finding living aliens, at least in their microbial forms on Mars. NASA's current mission to the Red Planet will reveal if such a possibility exists. Most likely, it will. However, the $2.7 billion question that remains unanswered is, are we humans prepared to accept the realities surrounding extraterrestrial existence? I don't think we are ready for such a revolutionary new line of thinking yet. However, we are close to finding extraterrestrial life, and we may hear some groundbreaking and mind-puzzling announcements soon. Hence, it would be wise for us humans to get accustomed to accepting the hidden truth. If microbial alien life gets discovered on Mars, the red plant may harbor advanced life forms in the future. That's if we don't contaminate the planet first, like we did to Earth, and terminate existing alien life forms on Mars before we even begin. Within the coming few weeks or months, we should expect to start hearing a series of conspiracy theories about alien life on Mars. Most of them will advocate that advanced extraterrestrials exist on the Red Planet. We might even be told that countries such as the United States, Russia, and China have already been working closely with aliens on Mars, and perhaps elsewhere. It has even been recently suggested that existing CIA documents could prove the presence of giant aliens on Mars and that the UFOs that are being spotted in north of Miami's and North Carolina's night skies are real. Perhaps it would be wise to dismiss all this nonsense unless you are one of the few who are fascinated by aliens and addicted to conspiracy theories and fake news. Nevertheless, prepare yourself soon for upcoming announcements that some Earth organisms could temporarily survive on Mars and that this could have significant implications for space travel. Such announcements are going to be hugely important as such microbes may help space travelers produce food and material supplies independently from Earth, which will be crucial when far away from home.
A couple of days ago, NASA unveiled the first video and colored images of the Perseverance landing on Mars, accompanied by the first sound recording of the Martian surface. I was so fascinated by those images that I spent all day watching them. This is one reason why I'm sharing them with you as we speak courtesy of NASA. The images and sounds from the red planet's surface can be considered as a treasure trove, especially the sounds recorded by the rover, which feature a strong gust of Martian wind and little else. There is even a good chance that NASA may find possible evidence of rudimentary life, including signs of microbes, in ancient sediments taken from Martian rocks by Perseverance, the rover that cost taxpayers $2.7 billion. The specimens would be the first collected by humans from an alien planet. NASA's newly released video chronicles the final minutes of the rover's entry, descent, and landing on the red planet on the 18th of February as the spacecraft plummeted, parachuted, and rocketed toward the surface of Mars. A microphone on the rover has also provided the first audio recording of sounds from Mars. From the moment of parachute inflation, the camera system covered the entirety of the descent process, showing some of the rover's intense ride to Mars Jezero Crater. The footage from high-definition cameras aboard the spacecraft starts 7 miles or 11 kilometers above the surface, showing the supersonic deployment of the most massive parachute ever sent to another world, and ends with the rover's touchdown and the crater. A microphone attached to the rover did not collect usable data during the descent, but the commercial off-the-shelf device survived the highly dynamic descent to the surface and obtained sounds from Jezero Crater on the 20th of February. About 10 seconds into the 60-second recording, a Martian breeze is audible for a few seconds, as are mechanical sounds of the rover operating on the surface. NASA also released the mission's first panorama of the rover's landing location taken by the two navigation cameras located on its mast. The six-wheeled robotic astrobiologist, which is the fifth rover the agency has landed on Mars, is currently undergoing an extensive checkout of all its systems and instruments. This video of Perseverance's descent is the closest thing to landing on Mars without a pressure suit. The world's most intimate view of the Mars landing begins about 230 seconds after the spacecraft entered the red planet's upper atmosphere at 12,500 miles per hour or 20,100 kilometers per hour. The video opens in black, with the camera lens still covered within the parachute compartment. Within less than a second, the spacecraft's parachute deploys and transforms from a compressed 18 by 26 inch or 46 by 66 centimeter cylinder of nylon. Tignora, and Kevlar into a fully inflated 70.5 foot wide or 21.5 meter wide canopy, the largest ever sent to Mars. The tens of thousands of pounds of force that the parachute generates in such short period stress both the parachute and the vehicle. In NASA's scientific jargon, this is referred to as the 7 minutes of terror while landing on another planet. Indeed, it is. From the explosive opening of the parachute to the landing rocket's plume sending dust and debris flying at touchdown, it's unquestionably breathtaking. The video also captures the heat shield dropping away after protecting Perseverance from scorching temperatures during its entry into the Martian atmosphere. The downward view from the rover sways gently like a pendulum as the descent stage, with Perseverance attached, hangs from the back shell and parachute. The Martian landscape quickly pitches as the descent stage. The rover's free-flying jetpack, which decelerates using rocket engines and then lowers the rover on cables to the surface. After breaking free, its eight thrusters engage to put distance between it and the now discarded back shell and the parachute. Then, 80 seconds and 7,000 feet or 2,130 meters later, the cameras capture the descent stage performing the sky crane maneuver over the landing site. The plume of its rocket engines kicks up dust and small rocks that have likely been in place for billions of years. Watching this video is very much similar to a ride of a lifetime and landing on the surface of Mars, especially with the added sound effects by the microphone attached to the vehicle, which enhance the viewing experience. The footage ends with Perseverance's aluminum wheels making contact with the surface at 1.61 miles per hour or 2.6 kilometers per hour and then pyrotechnically fired blades sever the cables connecting it to the still hovering descent stage. The descent stage then climbs and accelerates away in the pre-planned flyaway maneuver. The whole thing looks and feels like an old western movie with a younger Clint Eastwood riding his horse slowly into the setting sun. More about the Perseverance mission right after this.
Mars, named after the Roman god of war, has long been an omen in the night sky. In its way, the planet's rusty red surface tells a story of destruction, obliteration, and annihilation. Billions of years ago, the fourth planet from the sun could have been mistaken for Earth's smaller twin, with liquid water on its surface, and maybe even life. But today it is nothing but a cold, barren desert with few signs of liquid water. With longer years and shifting seasons, the planet has a radius of 2106 miles. It is the seventh largest planet in our solar system and about half the diameter of Earth. Its surface gravity is 37.5% of Earth's. In 2003, the Hubble Space Telescope snapped its first photo of the red planet 11 hours before its closest approach to Earth in 60,000 years. At the time, the plant was 34,648,840 miles or 55,760,220 kilometers away. The next closest approach will be in the year 2287. Years ago, scientists discovered patterns and landforms on Mars that they first strongly ascribed to a bustling Martian civilization. Now, they know there are no artificial constructions on Mars. They've also learned that, until 3.5 billion years ago, the dry, toxic planet they see today might have once been as habitable as Earth. Perhaps this is one reason why NASA is hoping to land the first humans on Mars by the 2030s. But why three missions to the fourth rock from the sun all at once? Well, the answer to that is more about timing than teamwork. The three countries, the United Arab Emirates, China, and the United States have taken advantage of the window that opens once every 26 months, when Earth and Mars are aligned in a way that minimizes travel times and expense, to send spacecraft to make the interplanetary journey in roughly half a year. The UAE, the Gulf country where I spent a quarter of a century of my life working there, is the fifth nation to reach the Red Planet and the first Arab nation to achieve interplanetary travel. Of all three, America's Perseverance is the most sophisticated. A large, six-wheeled rover equipped with a suite of sophisticated instruments, its target is Jezero Crater, where nearly 3.9 billion years ago, a wayward rock slammed into Mars, punching a 45-kilometer wide hole into its surface. It is a site of an ancient river delta, and a likely location for ancient life forms to have thrived. It is also an area of Mars that was once much warmer and wetter, and perhaps even more livable. Among the rover's many goals is helping to determine whether Mars was, or is, inhabited, making it a true life-finding mission. The Jezero crater is a very old part of Mars and the reason NASA chose it is because in the previous periods they thought Mars could have been habitable. Billions of years ago, a river flowed into Jezero from the west, spilling into a large lake that filled the crater. Sediment exited the river to form a fan-shaped delta. Therefore, another place to look for signs of past life on Mars is along the ancient shores of the lake. Perseverance is now on Jezero to explore its ancient delta. Its goal is to look for organic matter in the delta's rocks, which could indicate whether microbes or other life forms once thrived in the region. On Earth, deltas such as that of the Mississippi River hold huge amounts of organic material, the decaying remnants of plants, and other matter from farther upstream. If the Jezero Delta trapped this type of organic matter, the rover could find it by rolling across the formation and drilling. Scientists aren't entirely sure what the crater floor is made of, but the rock appears to be dark and smooth and could be a volcanic flow. If so, picking up a sample is a top priority for mission scientists. When that sample eventually gets back to Earth, researchers will be able to analyze it and obtain a precise date for the volcanic eruption that created it. This will help them understand the timing of geological events in Jezero. From the crater floor, the rover could then drive up and onto the delta, grabbing clay-rich samples and other rocks. It could later on head onto the potentially carbonate-rich rocks, drilling into those as well, and afterward drive up onto the rim of Jezero. If the rover takes this route, it will have traveled more than 15 kilometers and collected at least 15 to 20 tubes of rocks of different types, all in one year. And if the rover remains alive and kicking after its first Mars year, it will head from the crater rim out to the surrounding plains, called Nili Planum. This part of its journey will explore the most ancient terrain yet, including enormous blocks of jumbled up rocks that were blasted from deep inside Mars when another huge asteroid hit it. Nearly 4 billion years ago, 
these rocks could come not just from the Martian crust, but from a deeper layer of Mars known as the mantle, which scientists have never been able to look at directly before. These rocks have been sitting there for more than 3 billion years simply waiting for someone to look at them, and now maybe is the time. Perseverance will perform other tasks during its time on Mars, including testing the first helicopter placed on another world. It is the fastest way to scout the safest path across the landscape and experiment with ways to extract oxygen from the Martian atmosphere as a resource for future human explorers. Eventually, the Perseverance rover will search for signs of past life and test new technologies for supporting future human missions. The expensive rover is laying the groundwork for sending humans to the next world, using a space capsule, Orion, that will be able to ferry humans to the planet and beyond. Private spaceflight companies such as SpaceX are also getting into the Mars game. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has repeatedly said that humanity must become a multi-planetary species if we are to survive, and he is working on a plan that could see a million people living on Mars before the end of this century. There's a damn good reason for the billionaire to say that. The red planet holds some of the biggest mysteries yet to be uncovered. Mars rotates on its axis every 24.6 Earth hours, defining the length of a Martian day, which is called a sol, short for solar day, on Mars. A year lasts 669.6 sols or 687 Earth days, and an individual season can last up to 194 sols or just over 199 Earth days, but there are more complicated elements about it than this. Mars has a far thinner atmosphere than Earth, which dramatically lessens how much heat the planet can trap near its surface. Surface temperatures on Mars can reach as high as 70 degrees Fahrenheit and as low as minus 225 degrees Fahrenheit, but on average, its surface is minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit a full 138 degrees colder than Earth's average temperatures. Once upon a time, it was windy and watery. Previous robotic rovers have found clear evidence that billions of years ago, lakes and rivers of liquid water coursed across the red planet's surface. Again, in the ancient past, up until about 4 billion years ago, Mars seems to have had an inner dynamo powering a planet-wide magnetic field. However, no one knows till today what shut down the Martian dynamo. This remains a great mystery, yet to be uncovered. After all, there must be a reason why NASA decided to send another rover to Mars after the Opportunity rover's lights went out. They must have seen something that they're keeping secret. Otherwise, why would three countries spend billions of dollars to venture out there in just under six months? This puzzle is yet to be solved. But although Mars does not presently contain life as we know it, similar conditions have been found on Earth, particularly in Antarctica. One of the top 10 strangest places where life is found on Earth and where shrimp and other sea creatures live. Till this very day, no scientist on Earth knew how and why the early habitable Mars transformed to a modern Mars with a harsh, cold, and dry environment. But what scientists do know is that it's possible that the environment just below the surface of the red planet was habitable much longer than the Martian surface was. It's possible that these conditions could have once been home to life on Mars knowing that there are organisms that do like salt water. However, the present day conditions are likely too salty to be habitable. On the surface, Mars presents itself as a world on the verge of inhospitality, but the red planet's features may tell a different story. It's now up to perseverance to find out what the ancient chapters of that story tell. Yet, puzzling questions remain unanswered. Will humans ever build a scientific base on the Martian surface? like those that dot Antarctica, and how will human activity affect the red planet or scientists searches for life there? Only time will tell. But no matter what, Mars will continue to occupy the human imagination as a glimmering red beacon in our skies and stories.